really at the heart of it about dysfunctional families. Hey everybody, happy holidays. We got a whole bunch of Game of Thrones to talk about. Just right in time for the end of the year, they dump a whole bunch of information that gives us a really good look for how the season is going to play out based on which episodes, which directors are going to be doing. If you are finding me for the first time, we're doing Game of Thrones videos till season eight gets here. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. There is a new round of the giveaway I'll explain at the end of the video too. A lot of you have been asking me about the rumor mill. There's a lot of stuff floating around that might be fake, so I'm not going to address that. I'm just going to be talking about the things that the actual crew members have been talking about in what the directors are doing because the directors are picked for very specific reasons on Game of Thrones. So we know when the big battles are going to be happening. We have an idea for which episodes are going to focus on more shocking reveals and big twists. Obviously, we have an idea for what those twists are going to be based on the things that they set up at the end of last season. Stranger. I am hers, and she is mine. This is all due to us finding out which directors are directing which episodes. We had an idea for it earlier this year, but it was recently clarified. So this is the actual list and which director is doing which episode. David Nutter is doing episodes 1, 2, and 4. Miguel Sapochnik is taking episodes 3 and 5, and then Dan and Dave are taking the finale. So we know now that David Nutter is like Mr. Twist. He's Mr. Red Wedding, so he does shocking reveals, big character moments. So episodes 1 and 2 will probably be more big twists. Miguel Sapochnik's episodes 3 and 5 will probably be the big and then final battle. So episode 3 is probably going to wind up being the second battle of Winterfell just based on the trajectory of the Night King's army. Now it's totally possible at the snail's pace that they're marching that he could fly Viserion down to King's Landing and turn another army so he could start a war on two fronts. But just based on the structure of the season, what it sounds like is happening is as episode 5 will be the final battle and then the finale won't be so much a battle episode, it'll be them picking up the pieces. The actors have been doing interviews talking about George R. Martin's supposed bittersweet ending that they're getting ready to film. Sophie Turner's talked a little more specifically about Sansa's battles during the season, how they're more emotionally charged than their physical, ma making it seem like she's going to be battling for Jon Snow's soul. So because we know which episodes David Nutter is directing, we know which episodes will focus more on the human drama and sort of paying off the big moments that they set up at the very beginning of the series, like Bran Stark meeting Jamie Lannister again for the first time. So we'll dig into that in a second, but let's talk about the big battle episodes, three and five. Kit Harrington was doing an interview because he had that gunpowder series that premiered on HBO this past week, so people were asking him about Game of Thrones. So talking about the big battle episodes that they're filming, he says, I look back at Battle of the Bastards now and understand what it meant and what it was to do it. But at the time, you're just getting on with the job. I will say, I think I'm understandably more affected by it than I thought I would be. This is actually a clip from the commentary for that episode where Miguel Sapochnik is talking about some of the big themes because I feel like even though he's known for doing the big battle episodes, he also does really great character work during those two, which is the real reason why those episodes are some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones. Like people talk about Winds of Winter being one of the best episodes of the series, Battle of the Bastards, Hard Home, those are all Miguel Sapochnik episodes. So yeah, this is the shot, isn't it? That looks CGI, and I promise you, it's not. Wow. No, that's not the shot. That's not the shot. <laughs> that's not the shot. What? That one, not round the replication? Look, this is it. This is real. This of shot we shot people. on a, I think it was a this 600 mil lens. Like this. What, them they coming stopped, at you? Yeah, they stopped about a foot. And this is really them. Kit as well, which is, and they stopped about six feet from oh him God, this at, is, full oh. tilt, at full and tilt, and it was bloody great, and he did not blink. So because episodes one and two are David Nutter, it sounds like that's going to be consumed with everybody making their way to Winterfell, who's not Cersei because she's staying at King's Landing with a small force and the Golden Company is headed there. But pretty much every other main character on the show besides Euron is headed towards Winterfell. So the first two episodes will be them meeting up, Jon Snow introducing his new girlfriend Daenerys to the rest of the family the shocking reveal that he's a Targaryen, them dealing with that through episode two and then deciding what to do as they prepare for the army of the dead to arrive. So you can just imagine a version of events where they show up and they just have some fun. Daenerys meets everyone and it's a little awkward. Bran and Samwell wheel out at the most awkward moment possible and drop the bomb. The person you know as Jon Snow is really Aegon Targaryen, the heir to the Iron Throne. 
Because if there's anything that we can count on from Brand is that when he drops information, he always drops it at the most awkward moment possible. So you just have to imagine everybody in the Great Hall or everybody at a great feast or some sort of private meeting where you have all the main characters sitting around a fire talking to each other, being really awkward. But shifting gears immediately, he goes into three-eyed raven mode and senses the Night King is coming. So episode two is them getting ready for that. Then episode three is just a giant battle for Winterfell. You get your big character deaths. And then episode four is them sort of regrouping and probably going to Cersei saying, hey, this is what's happened and trying to make a deal with her. Episode five sounds like it will be the real final battle and it will end up happening down at King's Landing because we know there's a bunch of siege weapons that are being set up outside their King's Landing set. So King's Landing and Winterfell are probably where the two big battles of the season will be happening. And it makes sense that if they're only going to have six episodes, you're only going to have time for two crazy big battles. Those are the two most important places on the TV show. Like you started the first episode up at Winterfell. Almost every single main character was up there. Then you go straight to King's Landing. The whole first season started out predicated on the idea that it was all about Stark's versus Lannisters before we ever learned about the threat of White Walkers. So it sounds like the big final battle will be more of a human battle and that will be Cersei getting her comeuppance. They kill off anybody else that they're planning on killing off during that episode and then episode 6 is the bittersweet ending where they just try to pick up the pieces and move forward. The dream of spring. And I do think that we're all expecting at least one of the episode titles to be a dream of spring if it's not the final episode title. But let me know in the comments, knowing what some of the big twists and reveals are going to be, now that you know the list of directors and which episodes they're doing, when do you think those big twists will happen? And on top of that, we also learned some more about what's going on with the Ironborn. So I am planning on doing an Ironborn video, but there's some other stuff that I'm waiting on, so that probably won't post till this weekend. Let me know if there's any bonus videos that you guys really want me to do, and I'll say congratulations to the giveaway winner from my last video, the MK Flash. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. I'll announce a new winner when I post new Game of Thrones. You can click here for that Targaryen history video, and you can click here to learn all about the Season 8 premiere date. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.